Now, I'm back up here. This particular field, you see the absence of weeds? Are you interested in what herbicide this farmer used to get that level of weed control? He used none. No-till organic. No tillage, no herbicide. Here's a secret. He used a cover crop. He used a roller crimper to mechanically kill that cover crop. It mashes the stems and kills the plant, and he kills the cover crop and plants into it no-till in one pass. He also used no fertilizer. And this field produced 10 tons per hectare of maize. Okay, this is soybeans planted after wheat harvest in the summer of 20, the year 2012. The year 2012 was the driest year in history in my area. Obviously, these soybeans are dead because they got no rain. But look at this field. Also, soybeans planted into wheat after wheat harvest. They looked fine. Also in 2012. This guy must have gotten rain. Have you heard uh, the world's luckiest farmer? I, someday I hope to meet this man. His name is Hugh Guys. I, I, I don't know where he farms, but I, I need to buy a farm there because everywhere I go and I talk about things like this, people say, ah, we just don't get as much rain as you guys. <laughs> you guys get all the rain. You guys have better soil. So I, I need to meet this Hugh Guys. This must be his field. Actually, this is the same field. In 2012, hay was in such short supply that the price for wheat straw skyrocketed, became very high. And so this farmer decided to harvest the wheat straw and sell it before he planted the soybeans. The blue line, you see the line between the good soybeans and the poor soybeans? That is where the swather broke down. And rather than wait to fix the swaffer, they said, we'll just plant the beans into the remaining stubble without bailing. Look at the difference. Mulch is magic. The more mulch you have, the more residue, the more straw you can leave on that soil, the higher the infiltration rate becomes. The faster your water will infiltrate into the soil. This is one of the pictures I started with. My neighbor with a terrible drought. Why is his field dying and the field immediately next to it is thriving? Because several years ago, this farmer bailed and sold all of his maize stover. Everything that grew on that field was put into a bale and sold. One of these. And he continued that for several years. Every year, in fact. The first year, he thought he had found a gold mine on his property. He was making almost as much money on the stover as he was on the grain. But he has had five consecutive crop failures. Even though we have not had drought, the crop still dies from lack of moisture every year. And then how does, will this make grain? So how does he make money from this field now? He bales it up and sells it. The entire crop. It's the only way he can make money now. He's created a situation in which he has no escape. His neighbor has never bailed it. He leaves it in place. Hey, if you don't have enough residue, if you don't have enough cover on the field, how do you create more? This, the black line with the black dots, that is no-till wheat stubble. 
It's very good for water infiltration. High residue crop, no tillage. But the white circles is where they put in a sun hemp cover crop after wheat harvest into this. And what you see on the graph at right is three hours. It measured over the three hour time period how much water can enter the soil from rainfall. In three hours time, 180 minutes, 15 centimeters of rainfall were able to soak into that soil. How often do you get a rain bigger than 15 centimeters at one time? That's a fairly large rain. And this cover crop soil was able to absorb all of it. Another way that water can enter the soil is through the burrows of animals. Earthworms, dung beetles, termites, even large animals. We have a, a, a rodent called a prairie dog that lives in big colonies, live, makes big tunnels. And when it rains, water just goes right down into those prairie dog colonies. And the prairie dog colony looks like the surface of the moon while they live there. And then they move, and then a few years later, that's the most luxuriant, abundant grass on the entire farm. Or how do cover crops increase the amount of life in your soil? How many of you have cattle? Raise your hands. Most of you. If you fed your cattle nothing but maize stover or sorghum stover, let's look at this, sorghum stover and wheat straw, nothing else for their entire life, how many calves would your cows produce? What's lacking in the wheat straw and sorghum stove? Protein. There isn't enough protein. And when you feed cattle, you actually don't feed the cattle. Cattle are a walking fermentation bath. Their, their rumen is full of microbes. You actually feed the microbes, and then the microbes feed the animal. It's the same way in the soil. The soil is full of microbes. And your soil microbes need to eat, they need to have protein in order to reproduce the same way that the microbes in the rumen need protein in order to reproduce. If you feed your soil nothing but maize stover, wheat straw, soy stover, there's not enough protein for them to reproduce. Look what happens though when you add a high protein crop into the rotation. Sun hemp. Look at the number of earthworms that you get when you add protein into the system. Same thing happens when you add protein to the diet of a cow eating nothing but straw. And when you do add protein to that soil system, here are the kind of earthworms you can get. <laughs> this is not from my farm. I wish it were from my farm. Actually, that would be scary to have earthworms that big. I would not go out at night. <laughs> this is actually a, a species of earthworm from Australia called the giant Gippsland earthworm. Now, once the water is in the soil, it leaves the soil, it can leave the soil one of three ways. One is through transpiration, water use by the plant. That's the way we want it to leave. The other two ways are leaching. It leaves through the bottom of the soil. We stop that by increasing the water holding capacity of the soil so it can soak up and retain more water. The other way is through evaporation. Evaporation occurs because of three factors. Wind, sunlight, and temperature. So if we want to slow evaporation, the loss of water by evaporation, we first need to stop wind speed. After the Dust Bowl, we had a government program that encouraged people to plant lines of trees like you see at the upper left of this slide. 
My grandparents moved to a new farm after the Dust Bowl, and they planted a tree line, a box of trees, around every 16 hectare. When my father, who married their daughter, took over the farm, the first thing he did was take all the trees out. Because what he saw, as you can see here, that right next to the trees, there's this place where the trees take water from your crop. He saw that. And he said, those trees are costing me yield. Not only are they taking up valuable cropland, but they're competing with my crop. So I'm going to take them out. What he didn't see was that from that point in the middle, for a distance, nine times the height of the trees, there is a yield increase. And actually a fairly substantial increase. And I've seen research from Nebraska, which is the state exactly just a, a few kilometers from where I live, to Siberia in the Soviet Union, showing that when you protect your fields with lines of trees, you get yield increases in your crop, even when you take into account the space the trees take up. And that yield increase ranges from 5 to 25 percent, depending on the wind velocity in your area. Unfortunately, because people want to farm that extra little small amount of land, we take these out. And it's a shame, because not only do you, one thing I noticed when we were cutting down one of these trees in the winter time, the tree fell and the bark cracked on the tree. Thousands of lady beetles started scattering out of the bark of that tree. This is where lady beetles overwinter. When we took them out, we no longer had lady beetles. And then we had aphids because before the lady beetles would consume the aphids. Tree lines can be a very valuable asset to a farm, particularly in dry, windy areas. Another way to stop evaporation is by leaving residue on the soil. The same thing that we did to increase infiltration. There was a research study uh, in my home state of Kansas where they took maize stover, left it in place, and then compared it to a place where all the maize stover was removed. The difference in evaporation, the, the plot without the maize stover had 125 millimeters more evaporation than where the stover was retained. If more than 75% of the ground is covered, you get a big increase in evaporation. You need, if you see bare soil, that's bad. Make sure the soil is completely covered. That will keep it cool, and that prevents sunlight from hitting the soil. Now, there are also other advantages of that mulch. If you don't have enough mulch, you can create more with cover crops. Do you see the line where the cover crop was and was not in this field? What do you notice that's different between the two? What is present where there is no cover crop? Weeds. Why? Think about it. What can soy, and the crop is soy, the previous crop was maize. What can soy make for itself? that weeds cannot. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Maize, has a, for a, a large plant, has a very small root system. So in order to maximize yield of maize, you have to put on more nitrogen than it actually takes out. 